Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We are continuing our seven country Balkan road trip headed back to the southern part of Montenegro. We had already visited the northern areas of Plav Lake, Ali Pasha Springs, and Grebej Valley. But today we are headed to the coastal town of Kotor. This is a popular cruise ship stop, but there are a few things you should know before visiting. Parking is really bad and really expensive. There are buses though from the nearby town of Perast or Dubrovnik. Expensive accommodations are all in the old city, but they do have hostels, but it is a good home base when you're visiting other coastal towns in the area. It gets really crowded with cruise ships, so try to plan around that. They do accept euros and credit cards, and this is where we stayed. I wish I could recommend it, but it kind of sounded like you were sleeping in the wine bar that was below this place. So when you're looking at accommodation, make sure it has great reviews and know whether the parking is available or included. It's going to be really important that you know that if you have your own car. Otherwise, KOTOR is a beautiful place that you can visit. They have hostels, great food, great wine, and is a UNESCO heritage site. One of the first places you can visit is St. John's Fortress that rises nearly 4,000 feet above KOTOR. We didn't get a chance to visit because we were running out of time, but climb the 1300 stairs to get the best views of the city. We are here in Couture, Montenegro. This is our last stop on our 1500 mile road trip through the Balkans. If you haven't checked out the other videos, make sure to go do that. The old town of Couture dates back to the first century with the Romans and the fifth century with the Illyrians when they ruled the area. Much of the city was destroyed in the 1979 earthquake. There are a few buildings that survived, but it was all rebuilt. And one of the best places to start is at St. Trifon's Cathedral and Square. So there isn't one thing in particular I would say other than St. Trifon Square, but the best thing that you can do in KOTOR is actually just get lost in the streets, pop into the shops, be amused by the cats that are all over the city, and just enjoy the relaxed vibe. There are some pretty unique shops here in KOTOR. One of my favorite shops to pop into in any city is the Christmas shop, and this one did not disappoint. There is also a unique story of Santa's little helper, which is actually his granddaughter, pictured here. Like Dubrovnik, Couture was very wealthy and that was because of the maritime trade. Make sure to stop in at that museum and then head over to St. Nicholas Cathedral. This is a Serbian Orthodox church that has some pretty stunning iconographic images of saints as well as altars inside that's definitely worth a look. No matter what religion you are, it's always fun to go into these churches, at least for me, to see how other cultures and people worship and it really does have a serene and peaceful environment to get away from the crowds of these busy cities. One of the oldest structures in KOTOR is the St. Luke's Church that dates back to the 12th century and was one of the few buildings that survived the earthquake. If you go inside, you can still see the ancient frescoes. This is a Serbian Orthodox church that has distinct Byzantine and Gothic architectural influences. Remember to check out culturetrekking.com where you're going to find detailed guides of all of the Balkan states along with many other itineraries, tidbits for an epic adventure. Now back to our tour. thing KOTOR is known for is its stray cats, but they're well fed and well taken care of by the citizens. So 
pick one up and snuggle a bit. Or you can just head over to the cat museum dedicated to these furry friends. The streets here are really interesting because you can just walk down an alleyway and then all of a sudden, bam, you're in a square. And there are these cute churches that are from like 1195, I think the last one we entered was. There's one across the, the uh, square from the Cat Museum. It's called St. Michael's Church. I'm going to pop inside and see what's in that one. This is St. Michael's Church, built in the 13th or 14th century, and actually was built on top of a Christian basilica dating from the 6th century. So I was finally able to try some of the local wine here in Montenegro. Since we've been to the country twice, I figure, why not? So I got a bit of red wine. I forget what the name of it is, but it is a, um, a little bit of a dry, slightly dry, but sweet wine, but not too overpowering sweet. So it's gonna pair really well with my pasta. Pasta is delicious. And they give out fresh Parmesan. This is a perfect way to end a night in Couture. After strolling through the city, we came upon this guy playing the violin and it was just so romantic, but we had to head to bed because the next morning we were off and up to Ostrog Monastery. All right, one of the best day trips that you can take from Kotor is up here to Ostrog Monastery. It is about a two hour drive up some very windy roads with some very steep drop offs and hardly any guardrails. But it's worth it if you come and see St. Basil because apparently there's a lot of miracles that can happen here. Like a grenade that was thrown at the monastery and it was fully functional, split in half. And the only thing it damaged was a door. Then there was a senator that came and made the pilgrimage up way up to the monastery daily for about a month. He had nerve pain and it is said that he was healed when he would pray at St. Basil's gravesite. It was established in the 17th century and it has a gorgeous view of the valley below. There is a sacred vine that grows right out of the rocks here that is said to have healing properties from the wine. Now, as you go inside St. Basil's resting place, you're not really supposed to take videos, but my phone turned on for whatever reason. And after we came out, I really did feel like there were some things from my past I was better able to make peace with. So whatever religion is for you, just go in with an open heart and try to believe that miracles still can happen. As our trip came to a close from this massive undertaking of seven countries, 1500 miles, many, many beautiful views and adventures, I got a little sentimental. And even now, after putting all this footage together, editing it, I realize it's kind of sad realizing this adventure was over because it really was so transformative. But I also know there's so many more adventures to have. So I just wanted to say a big thanks to my dear friends, Aaron and Dom, for making this adventure memorable and incredibly fun. I love you girls forever and can't wait for our next one.